Welcome back to the channel, everybody. CMC Broadcasting back with another video. So I'm very, very happy to report uh, that the account is up another 3.7%. We're going to go over a couple of my trades. Uh, we're going to look at my PL. Before we do that, though, I want to start including in these videos a segment just about the overall market, how it's doing, where it closed, uh, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and start uh, with that. Uh, this is according to... Uh, CNBC. So um, the Dow Jones actually fell 80 points and the market was kind of lagging today. I definitely noticed that. And that's why I was playing uh, the short side on, uh, I think uh, both of my morning trades were uh, put options. So, you know, I was looking kind of for the fall. Um, it just seemed to be where the market was trending today. The Dow slid uh, 80 points Okay, and the S&P 500 dropped 2% as well. Uh, the NASDAQ composite is actually up 0.3% to end the day at 11,000. Now, the S&P is very close to its all-time high, um, though it did fail to actually break its all-time high today. Uh, but the, the NASDAQ over 11,000 points. I mean, this is pretty incredible stuff. You know, you also have the uh, economy, right? The overall economy to sort of consider. Uh, you've got jobless claims that were a little bit lower than they thought they were going to be for, I guess this is the month of, uh, or no, the weekly jobless claims, sorry, uh, fell actually all, by almost a million, according to the Labor Department. Now, you know, they could be fudging some of these numbers a little bit. A lot of people are unemployed. Um, but something I want to mention that a lot of people are talking about, I actually I was talking about this with somebody that, uh, you know, one of my buddies on social media that also trades stocks. And I saw this, um, I saw the, what I'm about to talk about in a, uh, a YouTube video from financial education. And it's that the market seems to be actually switching up a little bit. All of these tech stocks really boomed right since the, the crash in March. But now a lot of the big money, right? The big investors, the institutional investors, the big banks, they're actually slowly now taking a lot of that money out of tech. So we're seeing tech fall, right? Tesla's down. Um, Amazon, I think, is a little bit down from its high. Um but like the stocks that I've been following, Square, PayPal, uh, even electric vehicle stocks like Neo, a lot of this stuff that was really booming the last couple of months, it's down. And where is this big institutional money going? It's going into the value stocks, into the hopefully what's going to be the recovery stocks. And I think they will recover. I think airlines will recover. I think oil is going to recover. I think um, stocks like like hotels and airlines and restaurants, as soon as we get some really good news about the pandemic, um, it, these stocks are probably going to uh, gain a lot, a lot of percentage. I mean, some of these stocks were way up in the last couple of days, you know, some of the airline stocks. So it's something to consider, right? A lot of people retail investors, Robin Hood investors like myself are still uh, sort of going to these tech stocks, right? Hoping that they're going to make even new highs incredibly soon. And I think eventually they will, right? I, I think these tech stocks are going to be with us for a very long time, but just keep your eyes out, you know, on the future, keep your eyes, uh, uh, uh on the near future and the possibilities that some of these stocks that have been beaten down for the last six months now eventually are going to make a comeback, right? When we get good news, when people start traveling again, these airline stocks, for instance, uh, or restaurant stocks, they're going to hopefully come back, right? That That's the sentiment. But we do see a lot of this big institutional money going from big tech or I should just say tech in general, right, to these sort of uh, uh, value stocks that have been around for a while. They have nice dividends, though the dividend thing with like a stock like ExxonMobil that has a very, you know, nice uh, uh, dividend, a very big dividend. Um, a lot of the times those stocks can actually kind of lag, especially in a recovery type of situation, just because, you know, 
it, it's a dividend that they've got to pay out. So that that's something to consider. But um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, sort of include a segment like this just so we get an overall feel of what the market is doing, my overall feeling about the market. Um, you know, it, it's not bad, right? This is probably one of the best times to be in the stock market, especially if you're trading, but even long-term investing, you know, it, no reason not to be. Um, and, you know, even though the S&P dropped 0.2%, um, it's very near all-time highs. And, you know, the stock market, really the stock market has been around since the 1600s, right? So a lot of people that say, oh, well, stocks are, uh, you know, they're they're a boomer equity or, you know, the new thing is crypto. Listen, I, I'm not like hating on crypto or anything, but I definitely don't think that, uh, I don't think stocks are going anywhere, right? A, a lot of my capital is going to be, uh, you know, in and out of the stock market because it is extremely lucrative. And on that note, let's go ahead and look at the trading account, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, the, not the PL. Let, let's look at the, the gains, right? Let's look at the percentage gains. So we're up 44.96, almost $45. And uh, that's a 3.7%, almost a 3.8% percent gain so the account is well over twelve hundred dollars now i was at about twelve hundred exactly like twelve hundred and some change yesterday before i uh you know over traded lost most of it had to get it back and then i didn't quite make it we were like at at eleven hundred ninety but the account is well over twelve hundred now i'm very excited about this uh if I close out green tomorrow, well, actually, even if I close out red tomorrow and it's a small red day, uh, this will be the second week in a row since I've started doing this that I will be closing green. So you can tell I I'm excited about this, right? I, I definitely feel like um, I'm moving in the right direction. I found some kind of consistency. Now, am I getting lucky on some of these trades? Maybe, right? But I'm going to show you my entries. I'm going to tell you my reasoning for getting into these trades. And uh, today I actually didn't lose any of my trades. I only took three though, and I was extremely selective. I really waited for the opportunity. In fact, after my two trades this morning, I walked away, right? The, the market started trading sideways and I didn't want to get caught up in the chop, right? I, I think I've learned my lesson now. And it was hard, like it was hard to just get up and walk away from the market, even though there was some action. And if I looked around hard enough right if i looked at enough stocks maybe i could have found a play or something but i just got up and, and walked away because that's why i'm trading right i'm trading so that i can make my money get in and out during the day right this is why i'm day trading so i have daily income and then i can go enjoy the rest of my day so you know i just hung out i went to the gym it was a good day i came back at three o'clock for power hour and i took one more trade a small trade a small trade, and it was on Exxon Mobil on a nice reversal. Exxon Mobil hit a low of I think it was about forty two ninety, which I haven't seen it at in weeks. It was downtrending the entire day. I went to go check the indicators, like the MACD and the RSI on the RSI. It was oversold, and on the MACD there was obviously a reversal. We had bottoming tails. I'm going to show you all of this, um, and I managed to scoop up another couple of bucks. Right, so so we took it from about 3.5 percent to a little bit closer to 4 percent with that 3.77, 3.8 percent gain. But you know, you know, just think about the percentage, right? Like that's going to be my goal is to have sort of a percentage goal. It doesn't mean I have to hit it every single day, but instead of thinking about dollar amounts, I'm going to start thinking about my account in percentages, right? Like when I'm thinking about my gains. So let's go ahead and look at the, uh, I'll give you the rundown of the uh, uh, three trades. Did I, hold on a second. Did I post the update? Okay, yeah, I've got it right here. So here are the three trades. Uh, we're we're going to look at the charts too, but uh, we have AMD, we have BLNK, Blink Charging, uh, and then we have Exxon Mobil. So Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, Blink Charging, and Exxon Mobil. And uh, the best trade was Blink. We made $34. That was the second trade. 
Um, and then AN uh, Blink was actually, yeah, that was my first trade of the day. It went very well. I was in that trade by like 931. I'm going to show you the charts and everything. Uh, AMD, we did fairly well on. And then that last trade, it's kind of hard to see, but we came out with $5 exactly uh, on uh, 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 Exxon Mobil. And I think I still have to add this into my spreadsheet. Maybe I already did that. I forgot. Uh, so let me see here. Um, yeah, so basically, let me show you a couple of screenshots real quick. So this was the first trade. We're going to go into TD Ameritrade. Actually, let's just do this right now, okay? So I'm going to show you about generally. Okay, I do have it labeled. Fantastic. So this was one of my best trades, okay? This was the first trade I took on AMD. As you can see, right? we have several supply zones so a lot of supply this is institutional supply up here though it does look like in the after hours it was able to get up over uh at least one of those zones but we also had a lot of demand so you know uh, uh blink charging is trading in between heavy supply and heavy demand and you know i have to go to the other time frames to to chart some of these zones out but we're in this weird spot where you know there's a heavy selling pressure uh above but there's also heavy buying pressure below right so so the stock is kind of consolidating we're in an area of consolidation as you can see all right it looks like during after hours uh it's making a, a an attempt to sort of break break some of these levels which would be bad for me because I have puts. I think I have one put contract on Robinhood. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and look at the minute-by-minute uh, -minute chart here for today. So here we go, guys. Th th this is the deal, right? By 9.31, I was in this trade. I bought three contracts, and the contracts were not that expensive. I think they were like... Uh, let me see. Yeah, they were like 58, 60, and 60. Okay. So less than $200. I got in these contracts and I held them all the way down pretty much to the bottom. And I, you know, I, I was a couple candles away from the bottom, but I just wanted to get out and take my profits. I didn't know exactly where we were going to get rejected because we have a small demand zone here and it did sort of uh, you know, the demands, it was supported. I'm sorry, not rejected, supported at the demand zone. Sure. I could have held it for, you know, one or two, three more candles. I would have came out with a little bit more money, but you know, I, I rode this thing all the way to the bottom. Now I got a little anxious because as you can see this green candle here, right? Cause I, I bought, I got in at 931 right at the open. And again, the reason I got in is because we had a supply zone up here. We have a topping tail on this red candle signaling that there's heavy rejection. There was a lot of selling volume. The level two looked good. So it's not like I was just jumping into this trade blind. I had a pretty good feeling that this was going to go down but it made an attempt right buyers did step in the bulls tried to push this up back up towards whatever that is uh, 11 dollars and 15 cents and uh you know I, I was a little bit nervous but it was immediately followed by a bull can uh, uh sorry a bearish red candle and it sort of chopped around for a moment and then we finally got you know the rest of the move. So that was the first play. All right. That was the first play. Next play. Let's go to AMD. This was actually a pretty crappy trade on my part. And, uh, you know, it, I mean, I made money on it, but I got in way too late, right? My, here's my entry. This is entry one, right? And then this was entry two. And then this was my exit on both contracts. I got in too late. Uh, I should have gotten in up here, but again, you know, I was trading uh, blink charging, right? But I, I got in here at about 9.51 and then I let go at about 10.01. So it was about a 10 minute long trade. I sort of scaled into it. Um, 
And, you know, we had these three red candles here, right? When I came into this trade or when I came into the stock to, to put the trade on, I saw that there was a lot of selling pressure. Um, we were kind of at a, you know, it had a nice run yesterday, right? Like this was a very, very nice run and there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, there wasn't like a big demand zone anywhere in sight. It did find support, right? I didn't, I, I was figuring this, could have gone all the way back down here to this demand zone at around $72. It did not do that. And that's the reason I took the trade, right? I was thinking we were going to see kind of like an arch from yesterday to today. And, and that just simply didn't happen. Uh, I did manage to make a couple of dollars on it, but my entry was kind of late. I wished I would have gotten in up here if I were to, you know, take this trade again. And then I noticed it was kind of coming back around, uh, but the level two looked pretty good. And uh, again, you know, we just had a lot of selling pressure. So I, I thought, you know, what the heck, I'm going to take a chance. I think I got another contract. Um, yeah, I think I might have bought, yeah, I think this was two contracts. I entered one, uh, one here and one here. And uh, let me just see how much were these contracts, the AMD contracts. Uh, they were like uh, 174 and then 173 right? And then I sold them for about, uh, you know, $10 more, 180 or so, 181 uh, at uh, 10.01. And then I was done, right? Like that was my morning. And yes, I did look around, like I, I looked at uh, PayPal. I was thinking about taking some trades on PayPal, but as you can see, really kind of choppy. I mean, yeah, you could, you could catch some scalps in here and stuff, but uh, uh, I, I didn't do it, right? I didn't do it. Uh, I was also looking at Square, Square, you know, there was a little bit of movement here, but uh, when I was looking at it, it was hard. You know, I, I, I didn't want to mess up, right? Here's the thing. I have a habit of over trading. Like, it's a really bad habit. So I made my money. I was up over 3% of my account. So I walked away, right? I walked away and I thought to myself, I'll come back later this afternoon. And if I see any opportunities, I'll take a trade then. And that's exactly what I did. Wasn't the biggest trade, but let's go ahead and look at it because it was probably my best. It was the best entry I could have in hindsight, should have bought more contracts. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the Exxon Mobil trade. Okay. So, um, Exxon Mobil was on a downtrend all day long. I wish I would have caught this, right? <laughs> I wish I had caught, uh, you know, some of this uh, action up here. Yeah, I could have gotten in anywhere. I could have gotten in here. Couldn't have gotten. Could have gotten in here, and uh, could have rode this, you know, rode this down. Well, I didn't. Um, I was at the gym and I was enjoying my day, whatever. But finally, we got to lows that I haven't seen in. I don't know, a week or so. Look at that. 4292 is the low. Right? Right there. Uh let me actually look at the 20 day chart. Yeah, the last time we were this low on Exxon Mobil was What is that? The 8th of of June. So it's been like it's been no. No, it's the, sorry, <laughs> the 8th of August, my bad. The, yeah, so the 8th of August was the last time that it was this, uh, that it even hit this low. That that was like pre-market, right? And then it was probably another few days before that. So it's been like a week or two, a week or two since we've been trading. And this is what ExxonMobil does. It kind of trades in these zones. ExxonMobil has had a couple of down days, so I'm definitely going to be looking to uh, you know, for some consolidation and then maybe a move to the upside. But long story short, if I show you on the one minute chart, we hit the lows of uh, 4292. And the reason that I got in, right? Here's my entry on this white candle right here at about 310. The reason I got in, the reason I got in, guys, is because... We had bottoming tails on the low, which means huge price reject. Well, I mean, it's not the biggest bottoming tail, but there was some price rejection. It chops around a little bit, but you can see there are bottoming tails. And then there's a period of consolidation, red candle, red candle, red candle, all the same size pretty much. 
And so I tell myself, all right, I've got one, two, three bottoming tails on green candles, followed by consolidation. This is my in, right? I'm getting in right now. So I got in and I was prepared to cut the loss if I had to. It was a small contract. It was like 40 bucks and uh, didn't make that much on it, right? Like if we go back over here, um, I made... five five dollars so i only made five dollars on this trade but it was a perfect trade i rode it all the way to the top here and i got out at about i'd say 334 so it was more like a, a 10 minute trade maybe no, no no it was like a 20 minute trade 25 minute trade and when you look at it on the five minute chart or yeah the five minute chart here right not not a bad trade got in at the right moment got out at the right moment and uh i wish i had bought more contracts right but again this was sort of like i was just practicing and i didn't want to mess up my profit that i had made this morning so i played it safe i only got the one contract but i'm getting better at this right the point is is that i'm starting to recognize when i'm supposed to get in right i, I this is a fairly good trade the uh first trade on blink charging that was an excellent trade got in all the way up here and got out at the bottom the worst trade of the day that i still made money on was amd because you know it, it was just kind of a the move had already been you know had already come and gone i mean i guess i caught like the second half of the move this is on a five minute chart that's why it looks a little bit different than when we first looked at it but the, the big move, big move already came. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to cry over spilled milk. But yeah, the account is up another 3.7%, almost 3.8%. If I do this every day, and I think that I can, I, I know that I can, right? I mean, I'm going to have red days, obviously. I'll probably have a red week. I'll probably have a red month here and there. But I know that I can consistently pull in a profit and if i focus on that percent right pulling in three percent three percent four percent three percent three point five percent four percent five percent three percent right just kind of focus on that targeted goal two percent whatever dollar wise that percentage that number is going to get bigger and bigger the more days i in a row that i do that the account is already over twelve hundred dollars i'm going to take this to thirteen hundred dollars by probably next week if not more right um so you know to anybody that wants to get into this it's definitely worth it right this is one of the hardest things that i have ever tried to do but it is absolutely rewarding it's absolutely uh uh you know exhilarating it's 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 a real thrill right to put money on the line and and have full responsibility, be taking full responsibility for what happens to your capital, whether it's a profit or a loss. Uh, it's quite a thrill. Um, and it's something I'm glad that I, I got into, right? I, I've been on this journey for about six months now. I started investing on my Robinhood account about six months ago. Let, let's see how I'm doing on my, uh, I got a little money in Robinhood real quick. Let, let, let me just pull up my Robinhood account. Um, to anybody out there that's interested, definitely start looking into stocks. Just what I always tell people is pick a few stocks. This is what I did. Pick a few stocks and just follow them. Just follow the stocks. All right. Well, for some reason, my uh, account isn't pulling up. Is it pulling up? It is pulling up. I've got a put on Robinhood that I bought on uh, uh, Blink, right? Am I lagging? Hopefully I'm not lagging. I bought a, a, a put on Blink and uh, we're hoping Blink's going to go down. I don't know if it will, but uh, I, I figured what the hell. I'm probably going to start buying calls though. Probably. Um, so let's see. Wow. It's up 19%. That's crazy. Look, I'll show you guys. Here's my put option. Well, the put is up 19%. I don't think I'm up 19. Yeah, I, I'm only up uh, $5 on this put. But hey, we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow this, maybe tomorrow the put goes to the moon. 
Um, I got it for $70, and it's now worth $75. And there's no commission fees or anything on uh, on uh, 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 Robin Hood. But yeah, so I bought a put. It was only 70 bucks, and I I'm hoping to make you know maybe $30 on this. But we'll see. Uh, this is Blink Charging. You know, on the daily chart, here's the daily chart. On the daily chart, it looks like we could have we could have another big down day tomorrow, right? And, and if you're asking why why am I holding a, an option overnight on Robinhood? Well, number one, I got flagged as a pattern day trader on Robinhood, so they won't actually let me make day trades. And second of all, um, I'm practicing swing trading anyways. I want to start swing trading options because. Um, yeah, and it looks like we could get another down day. Maybe we get a green day and my, I, I gotta, you know, sell for a loss tomorrow, but you know, if you ain't comfortable losing money in this game, well, you better not get into it. But no, seriously, um, what I'm thinking, let me close out of the internet here. What I'm thinking with the swing trading is that, um, what I'm thinking with the swing trading is I'm starting to look at some of these stocks like the airlines, restaurants. There's another stock called Planet 13 out of Vegas. And, um, you know, just some of the stocks that have either been beaten down or kind of were left behind in the tech surge. We know the institutional money is starting to move from tech into these value stocks that have been beaten down it's starting to move into oil i'm thinking about buying calls with expiration dates far out with you know low, low uh, uh theta decay high delta and uh buying some calls on some of these value stocks and trying to double triple quadruple my, i mean some of these option contracts can go to a thousand percent Right, thousand percent. Imagine a thousand percent gain on like a hundred dollar investment. That's the beautiful thing about options, especially options. If you call the market right and you can get it right long term, you could easily, uh, you know, more than double your money, more than quadruple your money. I mean, it's crazy. I've seen some crazy option swing trades in some of these discords, but uh, yeah, I want to practice swing trading a little bit because the swing trading, I think, is how I'm going to really try to build wealth right? My own personal wealth. And uh, the day trading is going to be like daily income. Right? And, and of course, if I get to a certain level and it's big enough where it contributes to my wealth, you know, that's great. I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars just because I'm making two, right? But, uh, you know, that's sort of how I see the day trading is more like daily income and swing trading, core trading, investing, that's going to be for wealth building, you know, preparing for my future. Um, and yeah, you know, that's the update. That's uh, how I'm feeling about things. Obviously, I'm stoked. I'm pumped. I've never been prouder of myself. And uh, with that, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. What are you putting your money into? And um, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your evening. Make sure to give this video a big fat like. It definitely helps me out. Follow me on social media. The links for everything are in the description below. And as always, this is CMC 